Hey guys and welcome back to another video of Let's Learn Circuits. So in these videos I give short descriptions about ICs and circuits I use in my hobby designs when I do a PCB design. So in today's video I'm going to speak about the ESP32 and the CP2104. I always use these two ICs together. So if you guys want more videos like this and find it helpful please just give this video a like, uh, subscribe I'll be making more videos explaining circuit, circuits you guys can put together to make a bigger circuit for nicer designs. So just sit back and let's get started. So when I want to add Bluetooth capabilities or Wi-Fi capabilities to my design, I normally go for the ESP32. The ESP32 is for its price range is quite powerful as it has onboard Bluetooth, onboard Wi-Fi and has all the antenna designs so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the chip is a pretty basic chip. You need to power it, of course. So we always have our decoupling capacitors. Um, the reset. So this reset wire here is like uh, if your ESP32 gets stuck, you can push this button. It pulls it to ground and your ESP32 will reboot. This reset is also used when programming the ESP32. As you can see, it's got different pins, different IO pins that can be used. For, yeah, I use it for switch. Uh, yeah, my previous video I spoke about capacitors touch. So I use this pin, pin 33, IO 33, pin 9. And I measure the battery. So it's important here that the ESP32 can ho only handle an input voltage of 3.3 volts. A LiPo battery is normally between 3.7 volts and 4.2 volts. So I have to have a voltage divider to drop down the voltage so I can measure the VBAT. Uh, the VBAT. Yeah, TX and RX is where I program my ESP32. And to program this, I need a different IC that's USB to serial converter. Because TX and RX serial, ESP32 does not have a direct USB connection like the SN STMs and ICs like that. So we need another IC. So I'm going to talk about the other IC as well now. So the USB to serial converter that I normally use is the CP2104. Just a note, you can also use the CH340. That might be easier to solder onto a PCB if you're going to do it solder yourself. The CP2104 footprint is quite difficult to solder, but I find it more stable than the CH340. Uh, just looking closer to the USB to serial IC, like any IC with our decoupling caps, capacitors, uh, the CP2104 also has a PROM in it, a one time programming ROM, and to use that, you need to use a capacitor of 4.7 just following the data sheet. So what this IC does is it takes my input from my USB on the left here, my D plus D minus, they're differential. I will speak to that about that when we get to the PCB design and it outputs a TX and RX. So what I normally do is I mark it RX CP, TX CP for the CP2104 because like many of us, we sometimes swap these around. So the TX of my CP2104 must go to the RX of my ESP32. So it's over here. So I put resistors so I can see ESP RX, TX CP. So my TX goes to my RX, my TX goes to my RX. That's very important. Now the interesting part. So when you buy a dev board of ESP32, sometimes you see those small buttons, a boot button, enable button. So that is normally to put your ESP32 in a certain mode so that you can program it. So we add transistors so we can automatically do that sequence. So the CP2104 has internal brain, should I say, keeping it simple, that will toggle this RTS DTR to get your ESP32 in a state that the USB can program it. So you can see GPIO needs to be used for this. It needs to be a certain state and reset those are the two pins so when you have a design do not use io0 or pin 25 leave that for programming so that is basically the schematic we have our esp32 and our usb to serial converter that allows us to program the esp32 just look at the data sheet at these pins if you use arduino are capable of bwm different IO pins, analog things like that so you can just look at the data sheet and i'll tell you which pins are which uh, so on that point, the ESP32 is capable to be programmed with the Arduino bootloader or the Arduino IDE, depending on how you want to see it. It can also be programmed with ESP32's own software, but as a hobbyist, just go Arduino, easier. 
So let's look at the PCB designer. So I'll take this over to the PCB and speak about routing and placement. So now I took my schematic components to my PCB by doing the tools update that we've done before. So just tools update PCB from schematic. And then I just rearrange it. So some key things I want to talk about is the ESP32 is best to be placed on an edge. So that means like this. So the antenna should be on the edge of the board and no copper should be underneath. So you can see these lines here. That's a key part zone. So there should be no track running underneath this. So try not to do any tracks or coppers underneath your antenna and 5 millimeters by 5 millimeters. So you, if you make your own component, then keep that in mind. Another thing I normally do is I always have my CP2104 on the other side of the board compared to my USB. The reason being is the component D minus D plus and the USB D minus D plus, if they're on the same um, side, so if I flip this up, it's actually a bit inverted and my D minus and D plus have to cross. I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So you can see D plus goes to the right hand side, D minus goes to the left hand side. And I don't want that with differential pairs because these are differential pairs. Let's just put it back. There we go. So because of differential pair, Altium will take anything you make a D minus or D plus as a differential pair or underscore N or underscore P. So that means when I do the routing, I can go root, differential pair, and click on it. Now you can see both of them coming. But because the one is on top and the one is at the bottom, I have to place wires by pushing V. And then I get my wires. And then I can root it. You can make it a bit nicer change. So again, root, differential pair, straight down, via, and then straight to out. There we go. So it tries to keep the length here the same all the way through. The rest of it is your typical what is required when you root a PCB. So your decoupling capacitors must be as close as possible. So they should actually move a bit up. So they must be close enough to IC. Um, tr try to keep your track short for differential like we did here. There's also decoupling capacitors. So these are the MOSFETs, the MOSFET transistor, transistors that will allow us to auto upload to our program and our resistors that breaks up the TX and RX. That is it. So the rest you can just use normal routing, push that button, keep it nice angles, keep it neat. Uh, but other than that, the ESP32 has no other things to be careful for, just the antenna, your USB you have to program it with, and that's it. And just make sure you use the correct pins when wanting to do PWM or analog or things like that. If there's any questions, please let me know down below. Uh, you guys can also ask me questions on Instagram, on Discord, all the links are below. Have a fantastic day. Until our next video, bye.